Hi guys, my name is Jen from My Create Crafts. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create these Easter Bunny ID cards. They are both sided and they are subbed. They are so easy to create and it only took a couple of minutes to do. So in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step and talk to you about what items you're going to be needing to create these. So let's get started. crafters so starting in design space i'm going to go to upload here i have some images that i want to use for this um, if you're new and you don't have any images you can look into uh, design bundle or design bundles.net they have a bunch of designs or also you can look on etsy or even in here in cricut design space they have easter things so i'm just going to type in easter and i'm looking for something specific here so these these i purchased from design bundles and i thought they were the cutest thing to make these uh, little licenses for these Easter bunnies. So a couple of them are different. Um, these ones have this straight edge on them. These ones have a little curve. My cards that I'm using has a little bit of a curve. So I'm going to select these two. I'm going to add that one to canvas, add this one to canvas, and then I'm just going to choose these backs. I like it that it comes in two different colors. So we're going to add those as well. Like I said, if you don't have these already, you can look in design bundles or uh, Etsy. They are really awesome. I'll leave the link down below for the ones that I purchase in case you do like these ones. So I'm going to move these just to show you kind of what they look like. I think these are so cute. And, you know, during Easter time, I think it'd be kind of cute to leave it behind. So, you know, the kids would think that the Easter bunny was there and they dropped their card. I just think it'd be really cute. Unfortunately, my girls are all teenagers, so they kind of don't believe anymore. But it's still fun to make things like this. Um, so really the only thing that you have to do on here is just resize it. You can see already here it says print then cut. So there's nothing that you have to do with this. Um, just leave it the way it is. So for my size, I actually purchased, um, let's see what they're called, uh, metal business card blinks. These are sublimation blinks. And the size for mine is 3.4 by 2.1. And I'll leave it in the description below um, where at what uh, products I have and where you can get them. So if you have the ones that I'm getting here, it would be the same size, 3.4 by 2.1. I'm going to unlock this and change this width to be 3.4 by 2.1. Whoops, 2.1. There, just like that. And I'm going to change each one of these, do the same thing, unlock it, and then change this to be the 3.4 by the 2.1, and then do the same with these other ones here. Um, you want to make sure that it is the proper size. You know what? I'm actually going to make mine a little bit bigger because this is the actual size of the card I have. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger so that it will fit over the edge just a little bit. So when I put it onto the card, it's going to be a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to make it just slightly bigger. I'm going to do 3.6 by, let's see, 2.0. Um, three. We'll go up just a tad. So we're going to do the same thing with this other one. I'm just going to copy this and do this. You don't have to do this at all. Um, I'm just doing it just, it's just going to be easier in the long run. So basically I'm just copying it here and then I'm just going to paste that here just like that. So this is what they would look like, but I'm just going to change the size on each one of these to make them the same. This was the 3.6. And I'll show you later, and it'll probably make more sense when I actually show you what it looks like, but I'm going to change each one of these and then change this one to 3.6. There. So I'm going to go through and make sure they're exactly the, whoop, 3.4. See, I was going a little bit larger here. So I forgot to change this one, so we'll do 3.6. It's always very important to go back and check your sizes before you cut or print them out. So each one of these are exactly the size that I want. Um, this one would go with this one, this one would go with this one. Uh, I'm just going to actually copy this and duplicate it. So I copied all four images here and I'm going to put uh, push this plus button here just because, you know, I don't want to just make two of them. I want to make a bunch of them. So we're going to see what this looks like. I don't have to do anything with the print then cut on here. Um, it's going to do it all for me. I don't have to 
attach or flatten anything. You can see on the side they are all just ready to go. All you had to do is pretty much change the size. I'm going to click make it and then I'm going to show you what it's going to look like. So it's going to put these on here. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't like it that it, you know, you waste paper here. So if I can, I like to take these push the three dots here, move object, and we're gonna see if I can fit it on here. I don't know why, but sometimes Design Space does not do that. So I can take this one, see it won't fit this way, but maybe it would fit this way, we'll see. Yeah, see, there we go. That's a lot better. So I can put two here at least. Go in here, move object, do it to the first. This is up to you if you wanna do this or not, because realistically, you're only gonna get, you know, oops, wrong one. Where did it go? There it is. You're only going to get um, two on the other one. Or you can go back and also do, you know, um, let's see, two more so that you can do the same thing on this one here. So you can make two more so you don't, you're not wasting anything. But I'm going to move this up to the top. And then I'm going to move this one next to it just like that. So now I can save this paper. I'll cut this in half and I'll save it for the next one that I'm going to be doing. So just like that, nothing else that I want to do to this. Actually, the only other thing I want to do is click the mirror button. I'm going to do that on both of these. Very, very important that you mirror this. It's just like if you're using HTV, heat transfer vinyl, anything with heat, you always want to mirror. So I'm going to go ahead and click the continue button. I'm going to print this already. I have, uh, I use actually Hippo um, subbing paper. I use Hippo ink. And then I have a Ecotank uh, 2803 that I changed into a subbing printer. So I'm going to go ahead and send this to the printer. And again, I will leave all this in the description below in case you're interested in any of this. I'm going to click on this because I have a bunch of printers here. And I'm going to click uh, this button to turn off the bleed. Then I'm going to go ahead and print this. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this other one as well. And then it's going to say um, I have to pick what material I want to use here. So basically this is pretty much like a uh, paper stock here. So I'm just going to grab this one, pa uh, copy paper. Um, sometimes you might have to uh, either change the pressure or also cut it twice. So we're going to kind of see how this cuts out. But for now, I think I'm going to grab, actually, I think I'm going to grab this one, this card stock, because I am feeling it and it's a little bit thicker than regular paper. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that one. And then on your paper that you just printed out, you're going to see register lines on it. And I'll show you that um, when I get set up for the Cricut machine. But once you see those register lines, don't get scared. You're going to need those there. All right, so I have my paper here, and you can see the register lines on the edges, and I'm using a blue mat. Like I said, you don't want it to be the green mat where it's more sticky. You just want to push the flashing button, and then your machine is going to do a little bit of work. Um, there's going to be a light that comes on, and it's going to check those register lines here. So I'm going to show you what that looks like really quick. It's actually kind of neat how your Cricut machine works like that. So it's going to just kind of go through its normal thing, and then it's going to look for those register lines on there, and then it will cut out each one individually for me. Um, if you made a mistake and you printed this like I did before and you um, had to close design space and you had to print another one of these out, you can always take a scissors and cut them out, um, but this just helps to get it at the size that you actually need that it's going to cut it out for you. So it's just checking that you can see there's a light on, on here and it's just kind of checking for those register lines. Really neat. So that's it's going to finish this and then it's going to cut it out and then I'll show you over by the uh, heat press machine. All right, so I'm set up at my heat press here. I have it set at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. I have this brand new heat press. Uh, this is the HTV Ront heat press. Over here I have my old um, fancier studio heat press. I'm not getting rid of that thing, but I wanted to show you that, guys this one really quick. Cool features is this pulls out like this. And another really cool feature is it's pretty much automatic if you push the little A button on here, and I'll show you that in a minute. So here is my, here are my, I should say, um, cards that I'm going to be using. I've used these many times, and I really love them. I'll leave the link down below. Um, so I'm just going to take one of those, and then here is my um, cutout. So I wanted to show you really quick. I like to flip it upside down and get it off. And then you can just easily take these off of here. Just like that. So I'm going to take my first one, this bunny one here, and then what I like to do is, like I said, I like to make it a little bit bigger. So what I like to do is set it up here, get it where I can see it, and then take some heat transfer tape that I have here, and then just put some on the top, 
and the bottom so this won't move and then we won't have ghosting. That's why I like to have just a little bit of extra around the edges here. So just like that. Then you want to have your paper side up. So I'm going to show you again. And you want to take the opposite one you just that you just did because you want this for the front and then that for the back. So I need one of these for the back. So I'm going to take this out and just do another the same thing with another one. Actually, I need the back for this one. So we have got to remember that this one needs a back. So I'm going to show you what this looks like really quick. So this is the back. So I'm just going to take it do the same exact thing. Line it up. Get some tape. Oops. Didn't do that one well. Get some tape. And then just put it on the top and the bottom. And this is just so it doesn't move anywhere. You don't want any ghosting on here. You don't have to go nuts with the tape just like that. And then again, make sure you have it paper side up. So I'm going to finish the rest of these. Um, actually, I'm going to finish one more because I have a set of three here. So I might as well do the three of them really quick. So I'm just going to take this one and then just do the same thing. Doesn't matter which side that you use because you're going to sub on both of them. And then just line it up and use your tape. Again, I have my heat press set at 400 for 60 seconds. That's what works really well for me. So now that I have that done, I'm just going to take it. Paper side goes up. I'm going to move this out of the way. And then I'm going to be taking some uh, Teflon sheet here. And I'm going to cover it. And then this is the cool part. So watch. So what I said automatic is I close this. And it automatically goes down and it does the pressure for me. There's no guessing on what's, what kind of pressure I have to put on it. That's why I love it so much. There's a little A on here. You can have it where um, it automatically goes down for you. And then when it's done after the 60 seconds, it'll automatically lift up, which is really great. Um, so I'm going to wait the 43 seconds for this and then it's going to lift up and I'll show you what it looks like. So I just caught it so you guys could see it lifting up like that. So then you pull this out and you be careful because it's very hot. And I have some heat gloves here that I'm going to put on because this is going to be very hot. So I'm going to throw these on really quick. And then I'll show you what it looks like and then we can just work on the other side. So take this off. And then take the paper off of here. And the tape. And that's what it looks like. It's perfect. Just like that. So now we have to do the back side of this one. So I'm going to show you what these look like. So I'll show you the next one here. Just take this off. And there's that. And then one more. Sometimes it's kind of hard to take this off when you have these gloves on, but you definitely do need them. And then here is the back side for the other one. So now when you do it, you want to make sure you put the front side on that one. Now I'm going to take my gloves off, and then I will show you. So you have the rest of them here. So you want to take and find one. So this is the back side. It'll come in. There we go. And then I need to put the front on it. So what I do is just line it up like this, and then just do the same thing with the heat tape. Line it up here. Grab my tape. And then just it at the top and then the bottom again and then it will be both sided so just like that make sure you put the paper side up grab my next one and then just do the same thing let it go for the 60 seconds so this is the back and you want to make sure you do it the right way so you want to put it this way so the line goes up at the top and then just line it up again so it's nice and straight some issues right now. I'm running low on tape. And then you just want to press it again for the 60 seconds. So just like that. So make sure that your paper is upside again. And I don't remember what I did with my last one here. So I'm just going to have to wait on this guy. I'll show you what this looks like. But again, paper side up and then put your Teflon paper over it and then close it. Oh, see, here's my other one. I'll do that one next. 
But again, 400 degrees, 60 seconds, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So I hope you guys liked this video tutorial. These were very easy to create. I will leave all the things that I used in the video description down below. They are both sided, so it was really easy to create. I'm gonna be selling these at a craft store that I'm in, and I will let you know how I do with these, but they are very simple to create, and it's very easy to do. You can do it for Easter, you can do it for Christmas time, whatever you want, but I hope you guys like this video tutorial.